So I wrote this book, Zucked, Waking Up to the Facebook Catastrophe, because I saw something I never expected to see, which was a company I had been involved in, a company I loved, specifically Facebook, having this disaster of its advertising tools, the same ones that make marketers so successful, being used by bad actors to harm innocent people. So you have to imagine the context. My career began in 1982. I was lucky enough to become an investment analyst before the personal computer industry was real. And I got to be an investor through that whole cycle. I joined a venture capital firm, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers, in 1991. So I was in the most important venture firm of the internet when Mark Andreessen came in to start Netscape, when Jeff Bezos came in with what became Amazon, when Larry and Sergey came in with Google. And I've just been blessed to be in the right place at the right time. When I met Mark Zuckerberg in 2006, Facebook was only two years old. It was right after the, the period that's described in the social network movie. He had just turned 22 and he had a crisis. And I was brought in to help him deal with a crisis. And it turned out I was able to help him through that crisis and then rebuild his management team. I introduced him to Sheryl Sandberg, helped to bring her into the company. So you can imagine that as Facebook began to succeed, I was really proud of it. And I stopped being an insider in 2009, but I was a cheerleader. I really loved the company. And yet at the very beginning of 2016, I started to see things that didn't fit my understanding of what Facebook should be, of what it should be for its users. And over the course of that year, I saw more and more things that were unrelated, but could really best be explained because there was something wrong in the business model and the algorithms that could be systematically exploited. And so I reached out to Mark and to Sheryl Sandberg in October of 2016 with my fear that the business model and algorithms were letting bad people hurt innocent people. And I had hoped my friends would recognize that this was a threat to the business and that I was coming to them as their mentor and friend and hoping to have a great conversation and to fix what I thought was a fixable problem. I didn't understand the full dimensions of it at that time, but I'd been an analyst for 34 years and I'm used to being able to find a signal in things that might previously be viewed as unrelated. And unfortunately, over the three months that I pleaded with them, they treated it like a public relations problem, not like a business problem. And I realized that I couldn't count on them to solve the problem, that I had to become an activist. And once they became an activist, then the question was, how do you best communicate the message. And with the book, I've written essentially a memoir of my journey of discovery as I went from having a spidey sense that told me there was a problem to actually understanding all the elements of it. And in the beginning of the book, I'm the Jimmy Stewart character from Rear Window. I have no idea what's underneath what I've seen. Right? Jimmy Stewart sees a crime scene and he just keeps asking questions until he knows what goes on. And I did the same thing. And it's designed for people who not only know nothing about technology, but couldn't care less, but they do care deeply about being influenced. They don't want to be manipulated. They don't want to have democracy be undermined. They don't want their children to be harmed. They don't want their privacy to be wantonly invaded. And they certainly don't want to see the economy undermined by monopolists. And the book turned out to be a platform for activism. And it's allowed me to go and speak to ever larger groups. And the thing that's really beautiful about it is that I've discovered that this is, in a country that's polarized politically, this is an issue that transcends politics. That it's an issue of right and wrong, not right and left. And that, that really has pleased me because this is a time we need to bring the country together. And this is one of those issues where pretty much everybody I've met goes, you're right. I don't understand why these people are making markets in my most personal data. In fact, you know, I keep saying to them, it's not what you put into the system that's the risk. It's not that you're posting 
too much on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. It's that they're doing surveillance and gathering all this data without your permission. You don't even know it's there. And then they're using it in ways that effectively manipulate your behavior and you're totally unconscious of it. You know, and so people, they come to me and say, what should we do? And I say, it's simple. Every political candidate comes through, every corporation comes through, you ask these questions. Why is it legal for corporations to trade among themselves my most intimate personal data, my credit card transaction records, my location, my health and wellness data from apps, my browser history? Why is it legal for people who provide you with electronic mail or online apps to scan your documents for data that they can market? I mean, those are massive invasions of privacy. And if that's all they were doing, that would be bad enough. But they're also using their extraordinary influence on our lives to nudge us in directions that we're not conscious of, that are economically valuable to them. And what's really interesting is it doesn't matter whether people are conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat, active or non-active, everybody goes, yeah, wait a minute, why is that legal? And when you think about it, you realize it shouldn't be. In fact, the health stuff, if it were in a hospital or a doctor's office, of course you couldn't share it, right? And if you were in the bank itself, they can't share your financial data. I mean, there's basically been no rules. It's not because these are bad people. I like the people at Facebook. I like the people at Google. But in a world with no rules, business people are going to grab whatever advantage they can get. And then eventually, just as with the chemical industry, when we decided at one point that, hey, pouring mercury in fresh water is a bad idea, we made them pay the cost of the toxic spills. And effectively, we have toxic digital spills. And it's time to hold the internet platforms to account.